Tom Aspinall is the most dangerous man in human history when it comes to mano a mano, hand-to-hand combat. There has never been a person to walk this God's green earth that I would pick to beat Tom Aspinall in a fight. And you know what? There's only a couple that you could even argue, and that's Francis Ngannou and John Jones, and that's at best. I don't want to hear anything about Prime Steve Miocic. What about Prime Cain Velasquez or Prime Fedor Milianko? I'm not even going to entertain these guys to beat Tom Aspinall. If you are going to sit here and argue that the five foot ten, two hundred and twenty pound Fedor Emilianko that was fighting in the wild wild west against meathead gym rats that were just didn't have a fucking clue of what they were doing. Guys that were basically tin cans compared to the level of talent and skill that we see today. I cannot take that seriously. I don't want to hear it. Okay? You bringing up Fedor Emilienko is just as good as someone bringing up Muhammad Ali. What about Mike Tyson, man? Mike Tyson would give him a run for his money, no? Mike Tyson would get fucking taken down and fucking twisted into a pretzel. Okay? I don't want to hear that shit. And don't get me wrong. I'm a big boxing fan. I've been watching boxing forever. I'm a big Marty Lewis guy, Roberto Duran guy. None of these guys would have a chance. These boxing heavyweight champions back in the day were like a buck 50. Are you kidding me? It's not even close. And then you're going to bring up the grapplers. What about Gordon Ryan? Gordon Ryan would twist this guy into a pretzel. I know a bunch of jiu-jitsu nerds are going to be in the comments saying stuff like that. Listen, I don't want to hear about Gordon Ryan's immobile, stiff as a board, old man athleticism. Gordon Ryan would get flattened up and stiffened up like a board within 30 seconds. And don't get me wrong, I'm just as impressed as Mike Tyson beating the local milkman as the next guy. And I'm just as impressed as Alexander Kirillin out-wrestling the local postman <laughs> at his Olympic Games. But these guys are just not on the same level as the modern-day UFC heavyweight champions in mixed martial arts. That's it. And don't even bring up the warriors and the freaking samurais of the 1700s <laughs> or the gunslingers in the wild wild west in the 1800s i don't want to hear about it man i'm talking about mono e mono not even a navy seal in their right mind would admit or say that they could beat a heavyweight ufc champion in a fight without weapons i'm talking about no weapons I know that there's no there, there's a difference between training to kill and training to knock someone out bro stop don't even mess around with me right now. That's one of the worst takes I've ever heard in my life. That's essentially someone saying something like, yeah, Mike Tyson would smoke DC. Listen, I, I get it, man. DC's a, a bad man. That's a bad man. But come on, dude. Mike Tyson would smoke that guy. There's a difference between DC fighting and MMA and Mike Tyson really slugging it out against the cans in the 90s. <laughs> Stop playing, dude. Stop, man. All right. So let's just get that out of the way. I think that that's really impressive in and of itself. The UFC champions today, all right, not even the UFC champs, Chase Hooper, <laughs> Chase Hooper is one of the most dangerous humans in human history, okay? Chase Hooper could probably take out every single Spartan that ever walked the face of the earth, and that's just the truth. Maybe not every single one, maybe there was a couple mutants that were really, you know, freakishly large that also grew up like just fucking scrapping it out with other guys with sloppy boppy styles back in the Spartan days, but come on, man. Islam Makhachev would destroy every single human in human history before the 1800s. That's not even a question in my mind. Simple as. All right? Tom Aspinall is the heavyweight champion in MMA. Okay? Mixed martial arts is clearly the best base or the, the, the number one sport that can answer who the best fighter is. It's mixed martial arts. I think boxers would understand that. I think wrestlers would understand that. That is the best litmus test to determine who the best fighter is. Out of all mixed martial arts fighters, the best fighters are the guys that are fighting today. Just think about any other sport. Baseball, basketball. I mean, no one in their right mind would make the argument that a 1940s basketball team would be able to compete with an NBA team today. That You'd just be out of your mind. Okay, just by virtue of more people going into a sport that just creates better competition. I mean, how many people were going into mixed martial arts in the 90s or the early 2000s? There's probably a grand total of 800 people that were training in mixed martial arts in the 90s, right? In the early 2000s, maybe a few K. 
But let's be honest, man, most people were still sticking to the individual martial arts, boxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling. Nowadays, we're talking hundreds of thousands of people that are flooding into mixed martial arts to try their luck at becoming a UFC champion, okay? The competition is way more stiff. And trainers and fighters also have the fortune from learning from their predecessors' mistakes, not overtraining, not sparring as much. Not just going to individual martial arts gyms, actually being able to mix and mash everything, to train optimally. It's totally leveled up. And that just shows in the fights themselves. Like, if you were to watch fights from the 90s and the early 2000s, for the most part, it's totally unrecognizable. The, the difference in skill is so stark between fighters of today and fighters of the past. And it'll probably be like that in another 60 or 70 years. But the most significant development that you'll see in a sport is when it's in its beginning stages. And that's what MMA is in. It's still only been around for like 30 years. I mean, just think about Don Fry versus Takayama. And again, I know a lot of people look back on the pride days with rose-tinted glasses. But come on, man. You're just trying to be super hardcore and edgy to argue that the guys back then were anywhere near the level of the guys today. Fighters in the 90s, fighters in the 2000s, they don't have jack shit on the guys that are competing today. And I know that would piss a couple of you guys off that grew up watching Pride and Fedor Emelianenko, man. Fedor was just built different. Fedor would get flattened up like a billboard. I don't even want to talk about Fedor right now because I respect him. And, and I, I don't think it's fair to compare him to someone like Aspinall. Let's get serious. The fighters of today are the best fighters that have ever walked the face of the earth. Tom Aspinall is not just the heavyweight champion because I think a lot of us would agree that the most dangerous fighter on the planet is a heavyweight Okay, sometimes the light heavyweight champion, a really strong light heavyweight, is just so much more skilled than the plotty plotsters in the heavyweight division that they could go up and take them down and dismantle them, right? Cyril Gaon wasn't plotty, but he had a massive hole in his game, and John Jones exposed that, and that was a light heavyweight moving up to the heavyweight division. That could always happen. Tom Aspinall is extremely well-rounded, man. He not only has vicious knockout power, finishing the boogeyman in the UFC, Sergei Pavlovich, okay? He has ridiculous speed. We have never seen a heavyweight that is 265 pounds, okay? Let that sink in. A massive heavyweight. Just uh, He's cutting weight to get to the weight limit. Move like he is a lightweight fighter. And on top of that, this dude is extremely well-rounded, man. And he finishes people on the ground. It's not like Stipe Miocic taking Francis Ngannou down, riding him out for five rounds, land little pit-pat shots on Francis Ngannou. Tom Aspinall has been training jiu-jitsu for his entire life. His dad was the first black belt in the UK's history, for Christ's sake. Like, this guy is as well-rounded as you can get, right? When he's shooting takedowns, compare his takedowns to that of a high-level collegiate wrestler like Curtis Blades. Aspinall's takedowns are way better than Curtis Blades, all right? Let's not talk about the accolades and Rico, Verhan, Rico Van Hooven's kickboxing and, and Muhammad Ali's little head movement and rope a dope on the fence. I don't give a fuck about the rope a dope on the fence, okay? There's only a couple of guys that could possibly be in the same conversation, and it's not Stipe. It just isn't. I watched Stipe's entire title reign. I've seen Stipe's career. He was a guy that was flat-footed. He was a one-dimensional boxer. He didn't have anywhere near the level of speed as someone like Tom Aspinall. He had the grappling, but it was the simple takedown into a lay on top of someone for five minutes type of ground and pound. Now, I understand he TKO'd Alistair Overeem on the ground. I understand he dominated Francis Ngannou, but come on. We have never seen anyone finish people with the level of ease that Tom Aspinall has displayed in his fights. Just compare his win over Alexander Volkov to that of a high-level wrestler like Curtis Blades, who's known to be like a better grappler than Stipe Miocic. Curtis Blades took him five rounds, okay? Made it a boring fight. Tom Aspinall just blitzed creaked him on the ground. It's just different. I don't want to hear Cain Velasquez the 220-pound Chris Dawkins build with a better chin and better cardio and better grappling. I don't want to hear it, dude. A guy like Cain Velasquez, one of the best heavyweights to ever do it, one of the most dangerous humans in human history, because let's be honest, like every single heavyweight champion that's fought in the UFC is like top 30 most dangerous fighters ever, straight up. But guys, you have to hear me out, man. It's Jones, it's Ngannou, 
and it's Aspinall. Pavlovich is even in the mix. Throw Pavlovich back into the pride days. This guy will win 50 belts, and you know it too. Pavlovich would have smoked someone like uh, Fedor Emelianko that got knocked out a bunch of times in his early 30s. So hear me out. If we can at least wire it down to a few fighters, that means it's a conversation. That means it is not crazy. I get it. A lot of you guys won't be able to wrap your heads around the fact that I'm saying that a UFC fighter today is necessarily the best fighter that's ever lived in mono e mono hand-to-hand combat. That's just basic. Like, that's just so obvious. No fucking shit. If you think that some freaking warrior from, from the 1500s, okay, some English warrior in the 1500s, or some, some colonial pilgrim is going to get all scrappy with Tom Aspinall. Like, you're out of your mind. You're just out of your mind. Okay? It's John Jones, it's Francis Ngannou, and that's it. Those are the only guys that you could even have in this conversation right now. And Tom Aspinall, I really do think that he could give prime John Jones a run for his money. Prime John Jones, a light heavyweight, would have to bulk up for three years to even compete with someone like Tom Aspinall. Don't, don't get me wrong. I understand that Jones in his prime was super dynamic and he was creative and he was explosive and he moved around a lot better than he does today. So it is a really good conversation to be had. But I've never seen anyone as dangerous as Aspinall on the feet. Jones wasn't flatlining people like this, man. Jones was taking people to a five-round fight and he was dominating people, no doubt about it. He was definitely dominating people, but he wasn't blitzkrieging people out of nowhere, okay? And it's not like Tom Aspinall's having adversity. Jones was having wars with guys like Alexander Gustafson, and he was having wars with people like Dominic Reyes. Tom Aspinall is literally running through people like it's nothing, like Francis Ngannou. The only difference is that Francis Ngannou had lost to Stipe Miocic, man. Francis Ngannou had a 15-minute fight with someone like Curtis Blades. I think almost 15 minutes, at least in their first fight. I think it ended in the third round. It was like a doctor stoppage. Francis Ngannou had fights in his career that were nowhere near as impressive as Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall is not even in his prime because we didn't see the best version of Francis, the one that knocked out Stipe, until Francis was like 35. Aspinall's what, 31 years old? Come on, man. Francis Ngannou doesn't have this grappling. Francis Ngannou doesn't have this wrestling. Yeah, he hits harder. But it's like, does it even matter in the heavyweight division? He doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the movement. He doesn't have the kicks. Aspinall's out here kicking like a maestro. He's like a technical maestro on the feet. I've never seen anything like it. I don't think it's a stretch to say this is the best fighter in human history. I really don't. 265 pounds, moves like a lightweight, can kick fast, has beautiful boxing, great head movement, right? And can take people down and destroy them on the ground. That's finishing people in a matter of fucking minutes, man. Not even. His last two fights haven't left the first minute. I mean, I understand, well, technically, he finished Sergei Pavlovich in like a minute and five seconds, but you get my point. Who the hell would compete with this guy? I don't think there's anyone. Please, name me someone in the comments. Sony Liston, well, Roberto, yeah, the Roberto Duran, man. What, R- R- Marty Lewis? Again, I love Marty Lewis. Like, th- that's one of my favorite fighters to ever do it. I think Muhammad Ali ducked Marty Lewis. But Marty Lewis w- w- was, was 210 pounds, dude, like fighters of the past like yeah they may have been healthier and all that like they may have not been as inflamed and all that and they were bouncing off the walls with energy guys had more testosterone back in the day because they weren't drinking the tap water and they weren't drinking out of the, the microplastics and all that i totally understand people were healthy it doesn't mean that they were necessarily more dangerous man modern day combat sports is the most advanced it's ever been the guys that are the heavyweight champions are the best fighters on the planet I think that Tom Aspinall could take Francis Ngannou down and twist him into a pretzel. I think Tom Aspinall could dance circles around someone like Francis Ngannou. Yeah, if he gets hit, he gets KO'd. I'm not saying he's unbeatable. I am not saying he's unbeatable. I just think that Aspinall is a better fighter than Francis Ngannou ever was. And I also think that I would pick him to win that fight. Prime versus prime. Come out at me. Come at me, bro. And also, I also have to say this. John Jones is a tough test. That's the only guy. There's only two people. That you could have in this conversation, in my opinion. That's John Jones, and that is Tom Aspinall. And I think a lot of people would see Tom Aspinall smoking even a prime John Jones by KO. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time.